It was around 14 years back when I first saw a few people performing exorcisms live in a temple premises. There were a few women who were supposedly possessed by some demons or ghosts and some kind of paranormal entity. And then there were a few exorcists who claimed to have supernatural powers which can help them to get rid out of these paranormal entities. This was my first brutal and legitimate encounter with the paranormal practices and rituals. In this hard long episode, I witnessed how these exorcists were brutally hitting women and casting the evil spirits out of them. Being a teenager, the sight was horrifying for me and somehow it left its imprints in my head. I didn't sleep that night. The flashes of the scene kept me awake. I was not thinking about ghosts or exorcisms or possessions or demons or witches or exorcists or anything paranormal. I was thinking about those women and the pain they must have gone through. During the entire brutal beatings by the exorcists or during the so called procedure, I was thinking about the mental trauma they were witnessing during the episode. I was thinking about the human side of a haunting. Whenever someone comes to you and shares a haunting they must have gone through, don't we fall more? On the side of paranormal, don't we tend to forget the human side of a haunting? Well, we don't. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jay Alani. I am a paranormal investigator. Or maybe a mythbuster, or a keen mite, or a ghost hunter, or a ghost buster, or maybe just maybe another unemployed. Indian youth who is a wannabe cool, according to few intellects, who are intellects in their own heads, who are intellects in their own world, and you can find their unrelatable intellectuality mostly on social media comments. That's a rare species, though. When I started my journey as a paranormal investigator, or when I thought to do something like this, I was lacking a goal. I was lacking an ideology. I didn't have the answer of an important question that why I want to do this. Back then, I only had a curiosity in my mind a curiosity of whether these things exist or they don't, whether the episode of exorcism I saw was true or not. When I started, I was heavily influenced by the conventional ways of paranormal investigations. To be very honest, I was heavily influenced by these so called amazing American ghost hunting television shows. The shows use a lot of scientific gadgets and tools to prove the existence of paranormal energies. They enter in a haunted location holding some sci fi tools in hand with a macho and a daring image. Like how Batman roams around the Gotham City during the nights. And of course, girls go crazy after them. I was young and all these things fascinated me too. That Superman like image, those high tech and eye catching devices, and of course, girls. I was also very much fascinated by the fame and money these people used to get on such shows. And I was like, this is it. You know, this is it. This is what I want to do with my life. I was like any other youth in this world who wanted to make big. But paranormal investigations has never been a career option in India. So I enrolled myself in engineering, the only success mantras of Indian youth, but I miserably failed 
And then I thought, let's become a pilot. And then I was lost in dreams of flying these machines in air. But then I again lost miserably. And then I decided to opt for mass communication. And yes, it worked for me. I started my media career, but slowly, the dreams of paranormal investigations got started growing in me very strongly. I wanted to pursue that as a full-time career. But unlike any other profession, this model was lacking commercial viability. I mean, let's be very honest, uh, that passion doesn't give you food. Very soon, I started getting my share of recognition in this field. Started getting videos, media articles, started floating about me. Fame started to knock my doors. My social media got a boost. Girls went crazy about me. People started treating me as a superhuman. I had a box full of paranormal investigation sci-fi gadgets. News channels started reaching me out and all these things started happening. But I was still lacking the idea of converting that as a full-time profession. And I was lacking the ideology that why I am doing this. What is the purpose I want to serve? Do I want to prove that ghosts do exist? Or I want to deny it? Because being a human, I want to know the extremities. Whether there is something or there is nothing. My function was not looking for a midway. I wanted to be on a site. And I don't know why. Why being on a side was important for me? Maybe because giving answers to people can make you earn something from them. Because everybody who spends expects something in return. And in case of paranormal investigation, people do have unrealistic expectations from them. Like they can talk to dead people, like they have this supernatural powers, like they have this entire huge aura of being demigods. I used to enter in a haunted location with these so-called internationally acclaimed gadgets which can prove ghosts or no ghosts on a place. And people went crazy after seeing me doing this. When the lights started blinking on its own, I myself went crazy. And started believing that the ghosts are as much real as books, movies, TVs, literature, stories have told me. But soon, I got to know that these tools are not more than a gimmick. And it only helps in creating fabulous content on camera. And has nothing to do with ghosts and all. Some of them work but still can't prove anything. They only help you in an investigation to get the direction and explain sounds and all. Soon, I started getting business offers in paranormal investigations. I started getting calls from people who claim their house is haunted and were ready to pay any amount which I asked for. I started getting calls from the builders who were trying to get rid from the coasts, from their under construction, uh, projects and they were facing losses because of it. Then from people who were looking for magic in their lives, unemployed people, uh, possessed people, people who wanted to talk to their own who departed, people who were heartbroken and wanted to mesmerize a girl whom they loved, people who wanted a shortcut of success. People who were going through hard times in their lives and people who were not ready to consider mental health as a serious threat. And here it was. The commercial model of paranormal investigations was waiting for me. The model was to give them solutions, which even I had no idea what kind of. But hypothetical, unrelatable, unrealistic solutions for which they were ready to pay any amount I asked for. I was totally ready to build my empire by selling faith and cashing fear. 
and to earn huge money, respect, name, fame, TV series, you know, books, media attractions, millions of followers and everything which any human ever wishes for. But still, I was lacking an ideology. The question why I want to do this remained unanswered. But one day, when I was scrolling through internet, I saw a news piece where a woman was lynched by a mob after being tagged as a witch. That caught my attention. Then I researched about it and I found we have killed more than 2,000 women on the name of witch hunt in the past decade. Then I got to know that several killings, rapes, molestations, fraud, lynching, animal and human sacrifice, etc. happens in the name of blind faith and superstitions in India. As my research got stronger, a feeling of leading a useless life started getting stronger in me. Soon it was followed by a case where a young girl was being molested continuously by a country who reached me out for help. Then one more case which came to me by an elderly man who lost his son in an accident and wanted to talk to him for once and was ready to pay any amount for the person who makes it possible for him. Even maybe on the signals on the so-called ghost hunting equipment. Then I started looking my archives of cases which came to me and I found 90% of the cases were coming from blind faith and superstitions. And here it was. Yes, the missing ideology was standing right in front of me. I wanted to eradicate blind faith and superstitions. I wanted to spread paranormal awareness and I wanted to bring paranormal reality to people. But for that, I had to lose all that billionaire dreams fame, name and everything which could have come to me. But I don't know why. I didn't take even a single second to lose every such thing. Because I got my chase in life. Because I discovered my goal of life. I didn't want to be on a side whether there is ghost or no ghost. I in fact left that way somewhere. Because my path was now bang on. The atrocities which were happening all around us in the name of ghosts and paranormal and blind faith. I left the extremity and I chose to be the midway. I chose to be open-minded and I chose to be what I am actually is. Now I started looking things very differently and the more I got to know about the realities the more I became confident of the fact that even there are any ghosts, they are not coming to kill me. Even they are around us, they are not entering in a human body. No, I would say that ghosts don't exist. They might. But until we have a substantial proof, let's stick to the reality. I do not spread false information, which is leading us to a self-destructive society which is running heavily on blind faith and superstitions. For all such videos where these fantastic gadgets claim the fantastic proof of ghosts, is what I want to say. That fantastic claims demand fantastic proof. There's the proof. I started working towards my goal to bring out paranormal awareness and started presenting realities of investigation without any alterations of the facts. In the beginning, no platform was ready to give my content a space because it lacked drama. So I decided to do something on my own and I started a podcast named Paranormal Reality. And then there was no looking back. Indians proved that all those content decision taking authorities on all such big platforms was wrong by accepting the truth without even an ounce of drama. 
My podcast, Paranormal Reality and Ansura Search, crossed a listenership of 30 million, always being on the top charts in the non fiction paranormal category. I was accepted by my fellow countrymen with both arms wide open. Very soon, books, series, movies started following back. But this time, there was a difference. There was a satisfaction, a self pride, and a feeling that I have contributed something valuable to people, to my country, and to my society. The commercial model was also set. I will generate content from my investigations, and that's how I will earn my bread. I took an oath that I will never charge even a single rupee to anyone who comes to me seeking help related to paranormal world. Today, I stand to you with the tag of India's only full-time professional paranormal investigator who also runs India's first paranormal company, The Paranormal Company, which deals into paranormal content, paranormal tourism, paranormal merchandise, paranormal events and few other things. I also stand to you with a pride of saying that my company also runs India's first ever paranormal helpline, which is there to help you in any case of any paranormal event or blind faith, which gives you free assistance on the same. And for people who are still spreading false information, I want to say that start showing the truth. India will love you more. Today, a lot of people call me skeptic, a mythbuster, but I will always remain a paranormal investigator because I have an open mind. I will always remain the paranormal boy. In my life, while traversing the undiscovered, I discovered myself. I discovered that the most scariest thing on this planet is humans. Happy holidays.